Hi there, in this video I'm going to go through the proofs of the derivatives of inverse hyperbolic functions. Okay, so um, inverse, so let's call this inverse hyperbolic derivatives. Okay, so let me take a red pen, underline that. So first of all, so let me call this result number one. Let's underline that also. Let me prove to you that if y equals the hyperbolic sine inverse of x, then dy over dx, when you differentiate that, you're going to get 1 over okay, the root of <coughs> x squared plus 1. So let me go over the proof of that result. So here, here's the proof. Let's take a quick red pen and ruler and underline that. So here are the steps. So in step number one, I'll start from the beginning. So y equals the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. And I rewrite that as hyperbolic sine y equals x. So that is step number one. Okay. Now, in step number two, since we're proving uh, a derivative, I'm going to differentiate both sides here. So, let's differentiate both sides. So, we need the d by dx of hyperbolic sine y, and we also need d by dx of x on the right. Okay, so in step number two, differentiate both sides. Now, this term on the left, so to differentiate this term on the left, okay, I'm going to do that as a side calculation. So remember, d by dx of hyperbolic sine y is the same as d by dy of hyperbolic sine y times dy over dx. Okay, so in other words, I'm using the chain rule in order to help me differentiate hyperbolic sine y with respect to x, okay? So, remember the standard result, when you differentiate hyperbolic sine, you're gonna get hyperbolic cos, so it's hyperbolic cos y, dy over dx. So that is what you should have for the term on the left, okay? So if I replace over here, d by dx of hyperbolic sine y, we have hyperbolic cos y, dy over dx and that is equal to d by dx of x on the right that equates to 1 okay now so let me call that step number 3 now in step number 4 uh, let me rearrange this so if we rearrange this we're going to have dy over dx is equal to 1 over hyperbolic cos y okay so we so in our minds we need to find dy over dx and we have to prove that dy over dx will come to 1 over the root x squared plus 1 so at the moment we're up to here now we need to write this result back in terms of x and in order to do that Ideally, if we write cos, hyperbolic cos y in terms of hyperbolic sine y, we can write all of the hyperbolic sine y terms and replace them by x, okay? So, in order to do that, we come to step number five and we need to use a hyperbolic identity, okay? So, the identity is one which has a hyperbolic cos and a hyperbolic sine and there's only one, which is hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared y is equal to one. Okay, so that is the identity for us. Okay, so I hope you can see that. So if we rearrange this, hyperbolic cos y is gonna be the root of, okay, hyperbolic sine squared y plus one, Okay, so let me 
continue on the reverse. Now, if I replace the hyperbolic cos y by the root of hyperbolic sine squared plus one, so let me do the replacement on the reverse, we're gonna have dy over dx is equal to one over the root of, so let's remind ourselves, so hyperbolic cos y is the root of hyperbolic sine squared plus one. So let's complete this, hyperbolic sine squared y plus one, okay? So that takes us to the last step. And the last step over here is, remember, hyperbolic sine y, we can replace by x. So if we replace hyperbolic sine y terms by x, in our result here, okay? So since x equals hyperbolic sine y, that means dy over dx is indeed one over the root x squared plus one. Okay, which completes the proof. So these are the steps to prove the inverse hyperbolic sine derivative so I've, I've divided the, the, the proof into st six stages, into six steps, and we're gonna use the same steps for the inverse hyperbolic uh, cos derivative also, okay? So, so here's result number two. Let's take a red pen to underline this. So if y equals hyperbolic cos inverse x, then dy over dx will be one over the root of x squared minus one. Okay, so let me go through the proof of this result using the same steps as we've seen in the previous video. So here's the proof. So in step number one, so let's have a quick look at what we did before. Step number one, let y equal, in this case, hyperbolic cos inverse x, and then we rewrite that, okay? So, y equal hyperbolic cos inverse x in our case, we rewrite that as hyperbolic cos y equals x, okay? Now, in step number two, since this is a derivative proof, so let's have a quick glance of what we did before we differentiate both sides. So over here, we're gonna differentiate both sides as well. So d by dx of hyperbolic cos y on the left equals d by dx of x on the right. So we differentiate both sides. And if you remember in the previous video, I did a side calculation and I differentiated the y term on the left. So in this case, the y term is hyperbolic cos y. So in order to differentiate that term, we're gonna use a chain rule. So we need d by dy of hyperbolic cos y, then multiply by dy over dx, okay? So d by dy of hyperbolic cos y is hyperbolic sine y times dy over dx. Okay, so I hope you can see that. And in this case, this takes us to step number three. So if I replace the left-hand side here by what we've found, we're gonna have hyperbolic sine y dy over dx on the left-hand side, and that's equal to d by dx of x, which is one, okay? Now, in step number four, what I've simply done is, in the so let's have a quick look at what I did before. I just rearranged to find dy over dx. So if we are rearranging this case here, dy over dx will be one over hyperbolic sine y. And in this case, like we, like just as we've seen previously, 
we need to write hyperbolic sine y in terms of hyperbolic cos y in order to replace all of our hyperbolic cos y terms by x. Okay, so let me just reiterate. We need to rewrite the hyperbolic sine y in terms of a hyperbolic cos y and then we can replace all of the hyperbolic cos y terms by x. Now, in order for us to do that, we need to use an identity. So we need to use a hyperbolic identity. So we need one identity connecting hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cos. And the identity for us is hyperbolic cos squared y minus hyperbolic sine squared y is equal to one. Okay, so I hope you can see that. So if I rearrange for hyperbolic sine y, then hyperbolic sine y will be the root of hyperbolic cos squared y minus one. Okay, so that is step number five. So let me continue on the reverse of this. So what I'm gonna do is let me replace the hyperbolic sine y term by the root of hyperbolic cos squared y minus one. So let's do that on the reverse. So dy over dx will then be one over the root of, okay, hyperbolic cos squared y minus one. So that takes us to the last step, step number six. So remember, hyperbolic cos y, we can now replace by x. So if we go to this step currently, if I replace the hyperbolic cos y term by x, we're gonna get that result. So since hyperbolic cos y is equal to x, therefore dy over dx is indeed one over the root of x squared minus one. So that completes the proof. Number three, let's underline that quickly. So if y equals the inverse hyperbolic tan of x, then dy over dx should be one over one minus x squared. Okay, so let's go through the proof. So here is step number one. So in the previous uh, two proofs for the inverse hyperbolic sine and the inverse hyperbolic cos derivatives, step number one is we let y equal, um, in our case, the inverse hyperbolic tan function, and we rewrite that equation, okay? So y is equal to the inverse hyperbolic tan x. If we rewrite that, hyperbolic tan y equals x. So that is step number one, okay? Now, in step number two, since we're proving um, a derivative, we need to differentiate both sides. So we need d by dx, the derivative of the left-hand side, which is hyperbolic tan y. We need d by dx of the derivative on the right-hand side, which is x. So remember, step number two, differentiate both sides. As a side calculation, let me calculate the derivative of hyperbolic tan y. And let's do that using the chain rule. So to differentiate hyperbolic tan y, first I need d by dy of hyperbolic tan y, then multiply by dy over dx. Okay, so let's apply this chain rule. So when I differentiate hyperbolic tan y with respect to y, that's a standard result. You should have hyperbolic sec squared y dy over dx. Okay. So that takes us to step number three, where I'm going to replace the left hand side by what we have here. So we're gonna have hyperbolic sec squared y dy over dx on the left and that's equal to d by dx of x, which is simply one. 
Okay, so I hope you can see that. Okay. So, if we rearrange this, so in step number four, if we rearrange, dy over dx will be one over hyperbolic sec squared y. Okay. And that takes us to step number five. So, in this case, if we make hyperbolic sec squared in terms of a hyperbolic tan term, we can replace all of the hyperbolic tan terms by x. Okay, so in order to do this, we use a hyperbolic identity. Okay, and we're going to use this identity. So there's only one that connects hyperbolic sec and a hyperbolic tan, and that is 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared is equal to hyperbolic sec squared. Okay, so this is the identity for us. Okay, so if I replace hyperbolic sec squared y by 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared y, so let me do that on the reverse side. Okay, so dy over dx therefore will be, so let's have a quick reminder. So if I replace hyperbolic sec squared y by 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared y, we're going to have. 1 over 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared y. That takes us to the last step, step number 6. And remember, let's have a quick glance. Hyperbolic tan y is x. So now we can replace all of our hyperbolic tan y terms by x. So since hyperbolic tan y is equal to x therefore dy over dx is 1 over 1 minus replacing a hyperbolic tan y by x will give us x squared okay so that completes the proof so as you can see I've um, divided that proof into six steps so that um, it makes it easier for you to understand the proof, okay?